guys, Monique here. Uh, really, really dressing up for you guys these days. <laughs> Sorry, things are getting a little busy, and, and so uh, yeah, that's a, that's a good thing, right? Listen, I have a, a really fun recipe for you. This is something I created last year, uh, and I and I haven't made it in a long time. And I looked in my fridge and I said, okay, what do I have? I'm starting to l run low on foods again, but I had some asparagus. And what I did last year is I created a crispy tipped um, gluten-free asparagus. It's kind of like a, an asparagus fry almost. But what I decided is, you know, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of little times out there when you have something that's nice and and crispy, but it usually uses gluten or panko crumbs or something like that. And I wanted to create. Uh, an, um, an idea that is that is gluten-free that you can use as little toppings. This could be great on top of, say, mac and cheese even. So first of all, what we're going to do is we're going to clean our asparagus. I've got a batch of it cleaned here. The first thing you want to do is um, rinse it under some water and then give it a little uh, break. You want to this bottom part of the asparagus is pretty fibrous and it's not really, it doesn't chew that well. So again, uh, instead, of, and instead of like cutting it all off at the same place, what you really want to do is let each one just, just break off where it wants to. And that's it. That's a nice, easy, like just like that. Now the second thing, and, and then remember, take these guys, you know where they're going, right in that broth bag. <laughs> We've got ourselves trained, right? Look at the tips of your asparagus because sometimes you might find the tips, this is where it's gonna go bad first and you get a little mushy up there. So just make sure you kind of check out the tips as, you, as you're rinsing them and get rid of those tips if they're, if they're a little bit icky. Okay, now turn your oven on to, to 400 degrees. I have a sheet pan lined with some parchment paper. I love to do parchment paper, a little easier cleanup. I have one platter here with a little bit of avocado oil in it. And then we're gonna make our mix. I've got two tablespoons of pepitas, pumpkin seeds. So this is essentially the pepitas, the inside of the pumpkin seed that you maybe have roasted when you cleaned out a pumpkin. Drop it into a little food processor, a little blender, or you could, you could hand chop this. That's it. I just want to break it down into something that's just a little bit more, um, let's see if I can get a little bit out of here to show you, just so it's broken down so it's a little bit crumb-like, right? Okay, so now we got some little bit of a crumb happening from our pepitas inside of our pumpkin seeds. I'm gonna add in two tablespoons of, of hemp seeds, little crunchy guys that, that add protein. Oops, there goes my Aleppo pepper. All right, I have a little cleanup to do later. I'm gonna add a little quarter teaspoon of Aleppo pepper. Um, red pepper flakes is really all I'm looking for there. I like Aleppo pepper uh, because it's a, it's a sweeter heat and it um, it's has more flavor to it, I think. I'm gonna do a little quarter teaspoon of my pink salt. I'm gonna take a little lemon zest, about a half, zest of about a half a lemon. Now, if you don't have a zester like this, you could essentially just cut off little strips of your lemon, put it in with when you do the pepitas, uh, and that'll help grind it up a little bit. This is gonna give it just a little of that extra flavor. I love lemon. It just heightens everything, and it brings freshness to it. Especially since we're in spring, right? We want a little freshness. All right, just pulse a couple times, just to come together. There we go. That's our mixture. I'm gonna put it on this other next little shallow pan um, here. You can see I had a little bit on there. Okay, now take your asparagus tips. You're going to roll them in your oil. Now I've got an avocado oil. You could do um, you could do an olive oil if you wanted to. You could do a melted ghee, you could do a melted coconut oil. Maybe, I don't know the flavor here. Well, it depends, it depends on your flavor. And that's it, I'm just rolling them in each. You see how well this actually connects to that asparagus? And those little crumbs hang right on there. I kind of get my whole asparagus in that olive oil because, and I only tip the end of it, but that olive oil is um, all over that asparagus is going to help it just give it some flavor, right? There we go. 
little crispy tips. Mm -mm -mm. And again, this is something you got kids. Get them in the get them in the kitchen. They could do something like this with you. It's a little tiny bit messy, but you know, it's all right. Things clean up. You'll run a dishwasher. All right, run that guy. He's got the little tip. And if you need to, put that up there. Um, you could scoop if for some reason. Oops, take that off. If for some reason you're you don't have enough um, of this little crust left, just use your fingers to kind of push it right on top. There we go. I'm gonna do just a couple more. It's pretty easy, right? So this is just like a little breading. This is a gluten-free breading. Like I said, I think this could really work well with a with maybe a topping if you're doing a topping for like a mac and cheese. Um, that'd be delicious. Uh, other things that you could make crispy as well too, maybe even um, a steak or on top of a salmon. Maybe a salmon would be really nice for this. All right, there we go. Now, that goes in the oven. Depending on the size of your asparagus, and you know when you cook asparagus, you just have to keep an eye on it, right? You might have a really thin, thin asparagus piece, or you might have one that's a little bit thicker like this guy. So the way that I, uh, that, that I think of this is if I want to eat them more like almost like little crispy fries where I want to pick them up and just, uh, just bite on them, I'm going to cook them for around 8 to 10 minutes and then check it. That's going in the oven. If I want them a little more cooked like a classic asparagus, I might go a little closer to 20. Now, I've had these guys. I have a pan that I just pulled out of the oven. You know, it's the magic of Monique's kitchen because that's how it goes here. Uh, these guys have been in about, oh, 15, they're probably closer to 15, a little longer than 15 minutes. They're, I wanted them out about two minutes ago. I didn't talk fast enough. Uh, I wanted to do a little, um, a little fry where I could just pick them up and, and bite them. And they're pretty hot, so I can't get too far. But you can see, um, hopefully you can see that they're all nice and toasty. Look at how toasty those are. So those are delicious. You can eat them kind of like a little fry when they cool or just put them on your plate and eat them with a knife and fork like you would asparagus. It's super fun. I think you're gonna love this, this little coating. Um, use it for a bunch of different things and have fun with that. I'm gonna check in, make sure I'm not missing anything going on out here, any questions you have. Gosh, that's it. Guys, this one's a good one. Give it a try. Let me know how it goes for you. And, um, and let me know, of course, as always, if you have any questions. This is, uh, this is a way to, to eat really delicious food. You're getting a lot of good nutrients out of that asparagus. You're getting the great zinc out of the, out of the pumpkin seeds. You're getting that protein out of the hemp seeds. Um, it's awesome. So all good. I am so glad you joined me. And I'm sending you always so much love. Bye, everyone.